The men of St. Joseph were officially started um, just over four years ago in April 2017 in this parish here in St. Joseph's in Stockport. The founder was a local accountant whose name is Simon and we started to meet for some spiritual direction and basically we identified a big crisis in the church which was a lack of men. Where were the men in parishes? Where were the men in ministry or in you know, different tasks within the church, there seemed to be a big absence. And so we decided um, maybe we could do something about that. So the initial inspiration really was to begin a men's group on a weekly basis, to gather men together for fellowship, for friendship, um, and to see what we could do um, about the church, how we could help the church, how we could serve the church. So initially there was a very strong um, desire to go out, you know, to engage in pastoral work, maybe to help um, the homeless or to feed people on the street, um, to do different kinds of pastoral activity. But we quickly realized that actually in order for us to, to do that, you know, in order for us to go out and proclaim Jesus Christ to the culture, to the world, we needed to know what the church believed. We needed to know what the faith was, you know. And so we, we took a step back, if you like, and didn't focus so much on the external activity initially but we began forming ourselves in um, a process of discipleship. And basically over time, it didn't happen straight away, but over time we developed three very basic principles um, that all the men of St. Joseph groups now follow. And they were prayer, serious prayer, serious study, uh, which is a program of study faithful to the church's magisterium. And from those two um, follows a very wonderful and authentic fellowship. So prayer, study and fellowship, that is really the focus of the men and then later the, the women of St. Joseph. So the men of St. Joseph is um, real, the, the fundamentally a weekly study group. So men come once a, every week um, to study the Catholic faith, whether it's the Bible or the catechism or anything that's in accordance with the Catholic faith, a, a Catholic teaching program. Um, and for men to come together to for every week, maybe for just a couple of hours to, to study together and share, talk together about that study and, and, and deepen each other's understanding and help each other. And from there, there is fellowship. So you, you, you form some ni really nice friendships with other men, uh, with having their faith in common and uh, meeting other men who are uh, in the faith, strengthens your own faith and um, it, it's a beautiful thing but it's once a week rather than once a month because uh, once a month is probably not enough to form that bond with the other men and to, to, to get into a rhythm of really deepening that, that faith um, and that's essentially what it is. I would say that the one of the real difficulties in our present culture is 
um, male identity, you know, what is a man? It's so um, questioned or so devalued. And so we strive to help each other um, become true fathers and brothers in the faith. And that is really quite powerful. I think for a lot of men, um, it's quite difficult to make friends. You know, a lot of men have friends connected with sport or drinking. And that's really it. You know, that's their social circle. But often when men are really struggling, you know, with some kind of addiction or some kind of um, even mental health issue or some crisis to do with their work or their relationships, their family, where do they go? You know, do they have other male friends who can, you know, put an arm around their shoulder and pray with them, talk to them, listen to them, help them work through? So this really is a very, very powerful and um, important dimension of the men of St. Joseph. So we really want to draw all kinds of different men into this, um, yeah, into this fellowship. We're not really bothered what you've done, you know, where you've been, even if you're religious or not religious. Um, we have many, many different types of men um, associated with our group. The main thing is that you feel welcomed, you feel that you belong here in this group, and we want to help you to become a better, a more godly man, you know, and a deeper and more genuine um, follower, a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we, initially, we, when we started meeting, it was in St. Joseph's Church in Stockport, and we didn't really have a name for, for, for the group. It was just men coming together to, to study fellowship and pray together each week. But it was after a, a, um, it was probably a, a, a year or, or, or so that it was Gary Stevens was in Poland. Um, he was um, uh, giving talks to a group called the Men of St. Joseph in Poland and he, they asked him if there was any English men who could join them in uh, Rome for an international men's gathering and Gary asked me if I knew any men and I said yes we've been meeting every week at a church called St Joseph so that's when we called ourselves the men of St Joseph. The, week, the weekly meet up to, to study the faith is the, the one thing that we would recommend that everybody must try to do. Um, if you can't come every week then as often as you can and then if that's all you, you want to do, that's fine, because that's good, because that will deepen your faith and form relationships with other men. And, but f once, once that happens, then naturally there's other things that, that, that come from there. So we, we're lucky enough to, to be in the church where um, there's a priest available to say Mass on that same night, and lucky enough that, to have adoration before the Mass on that night. Um, and then naturally a group of men will come up with other ideas that they want to do so we've done lots of things we've been on pilgrimages to Rome, Medjugorje, um, we, uh, Walsingham we've uh, gone out to feed the homeless and pray with the homeless in, in the streets of Manchester we've gone out in the streets of many local towns uh, with leaflets and uh, music uh, um, in the in the town square, um, some of the we've we've been into uh, prisons as well to 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 speak to men in prison. Um, some of the men have have been um, to a hospital. Some of the men have been outside an abortion clinic. Um, so lots lots of things, and then social activities: men meeting up for for breakfast for 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 meals, for coffee, for walking in the hills. So it's, it, it, the, the only essential requirement is to try and come every week to study the faith and then naturally from there, um, other activities will, will, will follow. I was a faithful Catholic. I was going to mass every day and reading a lot of Catholic literature and 
praying a lot and enjoying that immensely. But I didn't realize until I was advised in spiritual direction, I was missing the fellowship of other Catholic men. And, and also to set up the meeting in the middle of the week or on a Thursday night, it, it, it puts it in the middle of your life. It puts it in the center of your life. And from there, it gets into every other part of your life and the other men get into other parts of your life. So it, it kind of takes it from being at the edge of your life, as in, the, in a way, into the, into the very centre of your life, into all the things that, that, that you do. As I'm sure you are aware, St Joseph has become very, very popular in these days for the church. Um, I think many saints have spoken about this, many popes have spoken about the importance of St Joseph. And basically, I think St. Joseph is a very, very wonderful example of what it means to be a father and what it means to be a man and what it means to be a worker. I think those uh, three dimensions, you know, are, are really powerful. Now, we know that St. Joseph um, didn't speak um, that we know in the Bible. You know, there are no recorded um, words of St. Joseph, but obviously he was a man of words. He would have spoken a lot to Our Lady. He would have spoken a lot to Jesus. He would have spoken a lot to his work colleagues. So he was clearly a man of words, I think, which is important. But I think most important of all, he was a man of courage and a man of action. And that is... I think today in the church is absolutely vital. There's a real crisis of men being able to speak authoritatively in the church, just like Jesus spoke with authority. Now there's a big difference between being authoritarian, that's a misuse of power, but men and fathers, biological fathers and spiritual fathers, need to speak with authority in the church. That, I think, is really why we're in the crisis that we're in. That lack, that absence of true fatherliness in the um, church. And that's, I think, what St. Joseph provides us with. He is a provider. He is a protector. He is a man of words. He is a man of action. He is a man of courage and bravery and of um, a chaste fidelity to his family to the church. So I think those are absolutely wonderful um, virtues, absolutely wonderful role models uh, in terms of behavior that we as men all need to aspire to. And I think if we can do that, I think we will really help uh, begin to rebuild and to renew and to reform uh, the church in our days. The women of St. Joseph uh, started nearly two years ago. I was aware of the group of the men of St. Joseph and I actually managed, I'm probably the only woman who has, to uh, be invited to join one of their meetings and it was just beautiful. They were studying Jeff Cavin's biblical timeline. Uh, they had mass and adoration and I was just aware that the women needed something similar, if not the same. And then Father David approached me to say that Maria... Um, who he knew quite well, felt that we should set up a group um, of women of St. Joseph, the same model as the men. So that's what we did. We got together and planned it. Uh, and then we consecrated ourselves at New Dawn uh, two years ago in Walsingham. And the group began here. And it is the same uh, structure as the men. So it's three things. Um, first of all, serious worship and adoration serious prayer and we devote ourselves to not only our own prayer um, but to a good hour of adoration here when we meet uh, then to mass um, usually with the rosary or various other devotions afterwards and um, then we just make a drink which helps the fellowship and we'll have studied, at the moment we're studying the catechism, so at home we'll have studied a set portion of the catechism during the week. And we note down anything that is maybe a query, um, something that amazes us, frequently it's that, content that amazes us, and we come in and we share 
uh, we give one another space, uh, we don't interrupt, and the sharing is beautiful and amazing, and we learn something from everybody of the heart of God. Uh, it's just wonderful. And then we get to know each other more and more through various other activities and just our own social contact. We say Mass together every week. We have exposition every week. So we're sharing a lot of time with Christ in the Eucharist. And we get a lot, well personally I get, and I'm sure the others do too, a lot from it spiritually. And it just carries me through the week. It is just the friendship that we have, the connection that we have. We've had various retreats, um, but we've begun to see each other socially outside of uh, the Women of St. Joseph meetings or church events. Um, we've been to one another's houses and various two or three groups of friendships are beginning to knit together. It's not always the, the whole group. Um, people, I think particularly women, have family commitments and so on and so forth. But, uh, yeah, it, friendship, real friendship and real connection. We know about one another's families and fears and, and hopes and dreams. And one of our numbers just got married. Um, we were talking about that immediately before me coming here. So um, we rejoice with each other. We pray with each other on a chat. And it's not about doing anything virtually, but the chat. Just when we are at home or, or doing our own lives, we're still connected and we can still receive a request, could you pray for this or that or somebody's ill or, you know. So we're making real, real bonds and I would say that's what fellowship is. Um, I got um, in contact with Women of St. Joseph's. It had already started and I was interested but I was a bit concerned about the commitment of every week because I've got a son and a daughter. Um, however... I was quite interested and a friend advised me to get in touch. Um, so I did get in touch with Maria, who was the one running it in Reddish at the time. And she told me about the commitments. If you can't make it, you can't, but we try and et cetera. And yeah, it went from there. I started and I come the majority of the weeks anyway. I've managed to get help with my son, so... The Women of St. Joseph have been going for just over two years and we have completed the entire study of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which is quite a remarkable achievement, really. I don't know if there are many Catholics in the whole Church who have studied the entire Catechism from cover to cover. So we're now embarking on a new program of study, which will be the study of um, sacred scripture through the Jeff Cavins Biblical Timeline program. So the basic components of the Women of St. Joseph are really, really simple. Uh, we have prayer, study and fellowship. So those um, three uh, pillars, if you like, are um, emphasized in equal measure so we are committed to serious prayer uh, through adoration or uh, through obviously mass uh, attending mass and the sacraments and other devotions you know the rosary and the divine mercy different um, you know catholic devotions and then the study element really is um, a central a central component. It's what many, many Catholics find very difficult to actually study the faith on a regular basis or even to read um, spiritual um, literature. So we try to facilitate um, a, a solid program of study of the Catholic faith, something that is um, faithful to the church's magisterium and so it helps the intellectual uh, growth. It helps um, catechesis, discipleship, and knowledge of the faith, knowledge of our Lord, knowledge of the church, our lady and the saints. You know, it's really wonderful. And out of those two, prayer and study, come a really wonderful fellowship uh, because we're all 
sisters, brothers and sisters in the same faith. And so we're friends and we care for one another. Uh, we meet up um, outside of the evenings. We try to get to know each other's families. We pray for each other, help each other through, you know, the highs and the lows of life. So it's a real uh, grace for me to be part of this uh, movement. We're constantly trying to attract new members. Uh, we're constantly trying to become more missionary. Um, we're constantly trying to become more um, apostolic in terms of helping um, the homeless or those less fortunate um, different uh, ways in which we can uh, reach out you know to the poor and the needy um, at every level of society to draw them into a deeper relationship with our Lord and a deeper um, program of, of discipleship. If I were to invite um, an outside person into the Women's St. Joseph's it would be because it's just amazing um, you get the amazing fellowship, you get comfort. So if you're having a rough day or a bad time, you, you can come to the Women's St. Joseph and it will take that pain away. Um, any fears, you just offer it up to our Lord and he just takes the pain away. The Women's St. Joseph has changed me as a person. Um, I've been a lot more patient since joining the Women's St. Joseph. I've um, one of the fruits of the Women's St. Joseph is to go out with the homeless and I've been doing that with a few of the men of St. Joseph's and um, hoping to do it weekly so um, like every weekend or every other um, Sunday 